Happy Valentine's Day, good people. It is a day of love. And I hope that you love the people around you. You love the life that you're living. You love the money in your pocket. And you love listening to this podcast. If you don't know us, uh, my name is Lauren Williams. I'm a certified financial planner. And I am doing the No Better, Do Better series with my girl, Chloe Moore. Uh, We have been running this series. This is actually our second time. We've done quite a few topics. So if you have just picked up this podcast in the new year because you are ready to get your finances together, you have come to the right place. I am the kind of let your hair down, say what I feel, and (laughs) tell you how I think it is, girl. And Chloe is going to keep us prim and proper and stick to the facts so that we can keep moving along in the podcast. We are both certified financial planners that run our own businesses. And today on our No Better, Do Better series, we are talking something else that a lot of people love. Sometimes people don't love their work. And so they decide to go do something they love instead. And that is entrepreneurship. Chloe, welcome to the show, girl. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, let's get this party started on the love day. Anything you want to say about Valentine's Day and love to the people before we get going? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I put her on the spot, y'all. She wasn't ready for that. <laughs> well, at the top of every at the top of every show, we do this series called Trends, Taxes, and Tea. So we bring you the latest trends. We tell you a little bit about how to save money on taxes. And sometimes we're just giving you some good old-fashioned tea. But it's all money-related. So, Chloe, what do you have for us today? Trends, Taxes, and Tea. Yeah, so I have two different things I wanted to talk about. The first one is, you know, we saw a lot of mass layoffs uh, throughout 2022. Um, And so many of those were from big tech companies. You probably all heard about, you know, Amazon, Meta, uh, Twitter, the disaster that happened there, uh, Zillow, Peloton, and Snapchat, just to name a few. There's plenty more. That was a lot of the big companies, too. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And it was very, it was like watching a soap opera, the way things unfolded. You would think at this day and age, people would know kind of, hey, this is the right way to go about it. This is the politically correct thing to do or not do. And ooh, there was some ugly stuff that happened during that time. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, we we had clients personally that were affected. Um, Yeah, I work with tech employees. And so, um, so I had some clients that were laid off or, you know, just affected by different hiring freezes and people that were looking for jobs. So, so it was, it's been a really rough time. Yeah, definitely tough. Hopefully we are in for something better in 2023 because layoffs are not fun. One of the things I was just thinking, like what happens when people actually get laid off? Because I know a lot of these big tech companies, they hit a button and you are locked out. You, you can no longer get into your stuff anymore. But it's like, I had work that I was supposed to be doing yesterday, <laughs> had plans for the rest of the week of this work. So like the work doesn't magically disappear despite these layoffs. So I don't know. It's one of those mysteries of things that go into a black hole. Um, even though they're just trying to cut the cost, like the work doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. And also, you know, that, that just brings home that the fact that you need to make sure that you keep all of your personal and business stuff separate or work things separate. Um, you know, just make sure you're always one step ahead. You have your financial house in order, which we'll talk about. Um, just, you know, you never know what's going to happen and these jobs are not guaranteed. Yes. There are some perks to having a regular nine to five and a steady paycheck, but there are also some drawbacks. So uh, yeah, we'll be talking small business momentarily. Yeah. And so the second thing I wanted to mention was that, you know, small businesses, particularly micro businesses, and th- those are kind of the, impl- the businesses, I guess that we, we have micro businesses. So we have, you know, fewer than 10 employees. Um, but th- those types of businesses really soared during the pandemic. Um, And this came after one of the least entrepreneurial decades in U.S. history, which was after the Great Recession. Uh, So, you know, you think about just the kind of bad times that we financial times that we've had Um, after the Great Recession. You know, a lot of people were not wanting to start businesses or more hesitant. Uh, And for some reason, you know, during COVID, people were more you know prone to start their own business. So I think some of it was just, you know, people quitting their jobs as part of the Great Resignation. Um, and then also people had a lot more time on their hands. They were working from home. Uh, you know, maybe they just, you know, had more resources. You know, we had our stimulus checks. We, some people use those to start businesses. Uh, there's access to to loans and other capital and grants. So it, it was really a good time for people to start businesses. What do you think was the cause of the great resignation? Yeah, I mean, some of that was just people not, people really realizing like after, 
after they stayed at home and, you know, and just kind of had a break from the day-to-day grind, uh, just realizing maybe, you know, this isn't what makes me happy. And so I think a lot of people quit because of that. I think people also, you know, just even the idea of going back to work, you know, we saw that a lot last year, people were leaving, you know, their jobs because they didn't want to go back to the office. They wanted to continue working from home or, you know, they didn't want to go back to just the, all, all of the problems that come with me in corporate America. Yeah, absolutely. I think COVID, you know, turned the way that we work and do work on its head. You know, while some offices are opening back up and people are heading back in, you know, people just think differently about what it means to be productive, to earn um, their fair share. And also even like what it means to earn in general. Some people were able to cut their expenses, realize they could live off less and they changed their overall spending and their value. So, um, yeah, I found the great resignation to be really interesting as someone who who resigned or <laughs> has never worked actually a real job. Um, <laughs> it, it was something I was like, oh, look at all these people getting their freedom. Like, I'm, I am happy for them to realize that, like, there are things that are more important than what, you know, someone is telling you you have to do on a day to day basis. But we also want to be prudent if we're going to be small business owners, because we do still have goals, visions, values for ourselves, for our families. Um, and if we want to have a strong financial future, then we should start a business uh, with, with some things in mind, with a good financial foundation. So, Chloe, get us together. What do we need to know about starting a business? Yeah, so um, so we're talking about we want to get behind the numbers on starting a business and and really some of the things that you need to think about. Uh, we have clients who come to us all the time, you know, saying they want to quit their jobs and start a business. And then when we start to ask some of these questions, we get blank stickers. <laughs> so, so we want to make sure that, you know, if you are thinking about starting a business, that you you really do understand the numbers behind it and and really don't make a decision that will put you set you back or, or put you in a bad in a bad position. So um, this is, I wanted to kind of repeat this. We, we did a podcast series. Uh, it was, it was back in 2021 uh, when we had our first uh, No Better, Do Better series. So it was episode 106, if you want to take a look at that. And we talked about, you know, why is this such an important topic? And so I wanted to revisit some of these statistics just to kind of, you know, level set for today. Um, the first one is according to several studies, between 80 and 90% of small business owners make less than a hundred thousand per year. Hold on. So we just got to pause there for a second. Yeah. 80 to 90%. So there's a lot of people out here doing their, their small business thing. They don't work for nobody. But that six figure number is a big deal for a lot of people. And they think that, oh, their friend is doing well. You know, their, their car is nice. Their clothes are nice. So and so. And they're running their own business. I want to be like them. You might want to wonder like if they're not earning in the way that you're earning at your at your job it's not that six figure job it, it may look a little bit prettier than it is uh i know i am not a six figure earner in my job right now so i'm i'm part of that 80 or 90% but yeah yeah and you know you think about like a lot of our clients that come to us they they make you know multiple six figures in some cases and they want to leave their jobs to start a business so, you know, you really have to be realistic about what you can actually make and what's what's reasonable, how long it takes to you to get back to your salary uh, as an employee. Yeah, so. there's this movement called the FIRE movement. So it's like financial independence, retire early is what FIRE stands for. And sometimes I think that it kind of relates to the way you should be thinking about your finances if you're going to be a small business owner. So like you said, if you're coming from a multiple six-figure job and you want to go entrepreneurship, generally you're going to have to cut your expenses back pretty wildly. And that's one of the things that the FIRE uh, movement believes in. So, you know, some of those people are saving 50% of their income or only living off of, you know, 50% of their income is a, is a different way to say it. Um, if you're already used to living pretty frugally, then it's okay to go start a business where you're earning, you know, 50%, sometimes even 20 or 30% of what you were previously making because you have a lifestyle that fits into that sort of, uh, you know, the new budget that you would have. The cutback part is usually really hard for people, which is why I think a lot of businesses fail. Yeah, exactly. And that at least to the next thing, cash flow problems are the biggest reason why most businesses fail. Uh, you know, a lot of times you, you do need money to keep the business going. You know, you have expenses in your business, but you also have your personal expenses. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not able to cover your personal expenses and the, the cash flow that you need to keep the business going, then you will fail. Um, and so something else to mention, you know, even with businesses, if you're able to take off and start, you know, get a good start in your in your business, uh, twenty percent fail within the first year, and by the end of the fifth year, about half have failed. What year are you in, Chloe? I'm in. Yeah, I made it past five. 
<laughs> I'm turning seven in April. I, actually, I might be turning yeah. eight. I don't know if I'm turning seven or eight, but I made it, y'all. We go. Yeah, we, we made it. We made it. <laughs> but but it doesn't mean that, that we're going to make it forever and ever and ever and ever. Because some days I'll be like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to make it still. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, I know, I mean, yeah, you probably felt the same way. Even like two years, two through five, we there are plenty of times where we both wanted to just shut it all down. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads to another side note is if you're going to go off and start something entrepreneurial, make sure you have a good support system around you. And so, so support system being, you know, hopefully a, su- a supportive spouse or significant other, if, you know, you have someone like that in your life, because if they're not on board with what you're trying to do, it's going to make it really hard. Uh, support of friends, family members, but also finding yourself a group of other entrepreneurs that are in the muck on a day to day that know how rough it is. Like, this really stinks. And they don't necessarily have to be in the same industry as you, but you know, having someone to be that sounding board is a really good thing on that. Some days you're just like, Chloe, I hate this. I'm closing up the whole business and I, I'm not doing anymore. And she, and she will let me vent. And then tomorrow I show back up at work and I'm like, Ooh, look, let me tell you how I help this client. So uh, just having someone around to, to be that person for you is a, is a really important piece of the puzzle. I think as you get going in this entrepreneurial world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and the final thing I wanted to mention is that, you know, just think about the type of business that you want to open. Uh, you know, we, we did see a lot of online businesses start, you know, which is great. Uh, you know, there's businesses where you can, you can basically sell your services, you can sell your, you know, you can sell products, uh, but just, you know, understanding what type of business you want to do and, and what's the, what's the success rate of that business. When you get into things like restaurants, retail stores, um, you know, constructions, anything that has like a brick and mortar, uh, you know, associated with it, though, those things are, have, you know, lower profit margins in some cases and are, and are more likely to fail. So, you know, just keep that in mind as you're thinking about the next business that you want to start. And don't just do it because you think everybody else is doing it. You see cousin TT on Instagram and she started her business and she has 20,000 followers. And you're just like, I am if cousin TT can do it, I can do it too. Um, before you know, you're trying to to build the same sort of business as as this as this imaginary person that I made up. Uh, ultimately, it's about what you're good at, what you're interested in doing, and where your skill sets lie. Uh, I know for me, I've also gone into you know I run an online business, but I went into doing 12 week programs online, and we're kind of right in the middle of it. But it was hard. Uh, it's not a natural skill set for me to be emailing people telling you that the launch is here and that you got to buy by this date and you have to do that. that that's a skill set. And so while other people do it and you see them succeed, doesn't mean that you'll automatically be um, well set to be able to follow that same blueprint. And and that's all the rave right now, too. So many people have started an online business like I can give you the blueprint to start an online business just like me. And so they're making money off of, you, off of you while they give you the blueprint. Then you go follow the blueprint that doesn't work for something that is not there online business. Um, so I'm just saying to be to be leery of the things that are, are they're not natural skill sets for you. Like, oh, I like to cook, but I don't like to do, you know, this, but I'm gonna start a barbecue restaurant because I know I live in Texas and everybody buy, buys barbecue. Like doesn't maybe make a lot of sense if you like to bake pies and you go open a barbecue restaurant. Just think about yeah. that. Yeah. And, and Lauren, you made a really good point too. I mean, just, you know, people selling these courses, you know, we talk about scams all the time and and just, you know, some of these clickbait things on social media. But, you know, in, in 2020, we saw the scams of people selling investment courses and, you know, making money off of that. And then, you know, in 2021 and 2022, we've seen people selling, you know, even, you know, for my clients, like how to get into tech courses and, you know, just all of these things. And you find out some of these people were not that successful in tech or, or they were making more money teaching you how to get into it um, or scamming people then they were actually making money in their tech job. So mm-hmm. and the same thing happens with businesses. You know, people want to teach you how to start a business or how to, you know, how to succeed and how to grow your money super fast. But, you know, just be wary of those things. A lot of times those people are making more money selling you the courses than they are doing what they're teaching you how to do. Amen. Hallelujah to that. All right. So let's get into uh, the numbers here. What do we need to be thinking about if you really want to jump off this edge and and go deep dive into, um, into uh, entrepreneurship? Yeah, the first thing is just making sure that you have your financial house in order. And so, you know, if you if, if you want to start a business, you have to have a good good emergency savings fund. 
Uh, so, you know, we talked about emergency savings, like in previous in previous episodes, but generally, you know, we say, you know, six months is a good starting point. If you have a business that you're starting and you need to live off of your savings and, and until your business gets up and running or gets profitable, you need to bump that up to at least one year, ideally, you know, even up to two years. Um, but just, you know, make sure that you have some kind of savings to, to, to ensure that you're not one of those people that fails because of cash flow issues. Okay. So we are on episode 158. I just looked it up. Um, we have probably said the word emergency fund in at least a hundred of those 158 episodes. Um, it is a very basic thing that gets overlooked constantly. It is one of the, you're like, I heard this before. People keep talking about it. I don't understand. You know, like you keep wanting a magic thing to show up, but it, it's not going to show up. It's, it is really putting the basic foundation in place so that you are not, oh my goodness, like what the heck just happened here? And like you said, you're not one of those companies that's having to shut down in a short, short time frame. So whether you're a business owner or you're dealing with your personal finances, like having that extra little nest egg set aside. So when poop hits the fan, because it inevitably, inevitably will, um, you absolutely want to have that emergency fund. So how much did you say we need it, Chloe? I'd say if you're, if you're looking to start a business at least one year. All right. One year. And then what else should we be thinking about? Yeah, the other thing is take a look at your debt and make sure that you have your debt under control. Do you have a mortgage that is out of control? Um, you know, I, I have clients here in Atlanta with five thousand dollar mortgages. You know, that that's a lot for Atlanta. Um, you know, can can you maybe downsize or can you do something to to kind of offset these costs? Do you have are you one of these people with these big car notes or car leases? You know, can you can you get something a little bit less expensive? Um, do you have you know six figure student loans? Do you have credit card debt? And but you know the the more of these kind of fixed expenses that you have and the more debt you have, that just creates like more of a need to have have that cash flow to to support that debt. And that's before you even get to all of your regular living expenses, you know, like feeding yourself and you know, making sure that you can keep the lights on. Yeah, I think that's a really good point is not carrying um, things that are already financial burden to you into this next phase of your life. So consumer debt already speaks to not having a budget, already speaks to overspending in some area of your life. So if your income is getting ready to go down or be fluctuating gargantuanly because you're an entrepreneur, uh, you absolutely don't want to be overspending. So you're going to have to change your spending habits. And in addition to spending those changing those spending habits to, to be more in line with this new, probably lower income and short term, you absolutely want to get rid of that debt. So it's not one of those burdens you have to be taken care of because mostly credit card debt comes with a double digit interest rate. So that can be really damaging if you let that pile up on you. And if income is not coming in the way that you want it to. So try to get at least knocked out. And I thought you also brought up a really good point about, uh, you know, mortgages. The mortgage is not going away because you need to keep a roof over your head. And the, the $5,000 mortgage is times 12 months, 60 grand a year. Like that's a pretty good salary uh, for a lot of people. So you want to be mindful of, is this job going to allow me to do that? Or am I going to be in a rat race right out of the gate just to be able to cover the mortgage on a monthly basis? Uh, that might speak to you either wanting to downsize or be thinking about, you know, building your business a little bit more before you leave your nine to five. Yeah. But yeah, just, you know, getting into the numbers, think about how much do you really need to, to live on each month? You know, what debts do you absolutely, you know, have to have uh, that you can't, you know, pay off before you start the business? And then how much is it to cover all of those debts? How much do you need to, you know, to keep the lights on to feed yourself and to take care of, you know, just some of the personal things that you, that you might need? Um, and, and then, you know, can you, if you can cut back on any of those, but you know, you really have to sit down and, and know your numbers and calculate, you know, what those costs are to understand how much you need to have in your emergency savings. Chloe, do you have any examples of like things that have happened? You know, like we keep bringing up these emergency savings. Like what are some of the emergencies that entrepreneurs encounter, encounter or even just people in general? I know one that I've seen recently is someone got pregnant. Um, and so, you know, you're like, wait, how's that an emergency, Lauren? If, it, if you weren't planning on having a child and you went off and you started this business with this new lower income, and now you have this added expense, um, and daycare specifically is the one that's really crushing souls nowadays. Um, it could really throw things off. So 
the emergency became in the sense that the idea that there was the expenses related to, you know, the nine months of preparing the medical expenses. I think this person had an HSA, um, which, you know, led to like higher health care costs because this wasn't like a planned situation. And then also um, ended up in a single mom situation where they needed to figure out like daycare on their own. So that that can be something that would flip your plan on its head. Or are there other things that you can think of that have kind of flipped somebody's, uh, you know, like, OK, I got this. I'm good. Plan on their head. Yeah, I'd say another big one is, you know, if you do have a spouse or a significant other that you know, can help support you financially while you're starting your business, a lot of times people just, you know, think that that's a, that's a big cushion. I, I don't have to worry about some of these things. I don't have to, you know, cut back on my expenses or, or have as much saved because, you know, we have some more income coming in and that person can help pay the bills. Well, what if the spouse or significant other gets laid off? I was going to say, what if you got divorced? That's where I thought you were going with it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. What if they get laid off? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, or that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that income could go away. And so, you know, you just you really need to make sure that you you've planned ahead and, and you know, you try to you try to live on as little as possible. Mm-hmm. And also illness is another thing I think kind of throw throw a monkey wrench in things is people either get, you know, some sort of midterm illness where, you know, it takes six months for them to bounce back from it or, you know, God forbid something more serious or someone close to them gets ill. So a parent or like you said, a spouse, and it it changes the way that you're able to ramp up the work that you were planning on doing. So cannot stress enough. Life is lifing for all of us uh, to to get that emergency fund set aside, really understand those uh, your regular living expenses and then figure out, like you said, where you can cut back so you don't get caught off guard because we want you to achieve this goal of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. And another thing that people forget about quite often is employer employee benefits. Um, you know, we have when when you have a full time job, you have those those wonderful things like health insurance and dental and vision. You have, you know, the 401k match and just all all of those lovely things that, you know, Lauren and I do not have (laughs) (laughs) and that we have to create for ourselves. Uh, So, you know, you have to factor that into the cost. If you don't have a spouse or or a partner that can put you on their insurance and and get you those benefits, you know, how much is your health insurance going to cost? It could be four or five hundred dollars a month. And that's for a crappy plan. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, then, you know, if you don't have disability or or life, you know, if you had those things through work. Those are things that you have to get on your own and pay for those things on your own. So, and, and dental and vision, you might as well kiss those goodbye. Cause... Right. This is just not a thing. Right? Yeah, it's just not a thing. Lord, help my eyes and my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're pretty much you paying out of pocket for all of those. Brush, brush on a regular basis. That's <laughs> <laughs> your money in one of those, uh, the automatic toothbrush. <laughs> yes. Well, this is a really day. good point. And I want to pause here for a second because we always talk about the numbers. So like you, you're you earning a six-figure salary. Like I said, six figures usually seems to be a, a buzz number for, for a lot of people. Um, so you're earning 100K and you got all these employer benefits, then you jump off the ledge and you go start a business. Well, let's say that you you crush it. In, in three years, you're making your $100,000 again. Well, you're not really making 100000 because like you said, it's four or $500 a month for the health insurance. Disability insurance is incredibly important as an entrepreneur. Um, because like you said, with no employer disability, like if you are disabled, your business is disabled. You, you can't do the work. You can't provide the service. That's a big deal. So you don't want to skip over that one. Um, life insurance is yet another thing that you might have to pay for. But then there's this, this big looming thing of the 401k. I cannot tell you how many times someone has told me that is employed by a place. Oh, well, my employer doesn't match. So I don't want to contribute to my 401k. The benefit is already set up. It already has investment options available to you. It auto comes out of your paycheck. Like there's still benefits even when you are an employee and there's just a 401k with no match. When you're an entrepreneur, not only do you not have a match, because if you want to match, guess who's matching? It's your money out of your business that you made that's, that's matching yourself. But you need to set up the account. You need to set up the auto pay. You need to set up, you know, whatever it is. You need to choose the investments that are going to be in your 401k or your solo 401k or SEP IRA. And so, so many entrepreneurs miss the mark here because they never even get time. They're so busy. They, they don't open the, the retirement account. They don't look into what retirement account is available. And that's what we're all doing this for. We're all earning money to save money because at some point we won't be able to earn money anymore. 
And we're going to have to either, you, we're going to want to kick our feet up or we're not going to physically be able to work anymore. And we have to have something set aside. So those are pieces where your six figures is not six figures. You're going to, you're going to need to earn probably 150, 160 from your regular hundred to be able to cover all your employer benefits for yourself and kind of be even in that out. So don't forget about that. Yeah. And you really have to think about what are your ongoing, what are your ongoing business expenses? Because that, that determines how much you need to make to really match your salary as an employee. So, you know, that hundred thousand salary that you're getting as an employee, you might, you might actually need to make 200,000 because, you know, you have to factor in the cost of those employer benefits and you have to factor in the cost of taxes. You know, you, you will have taxes that you have to pay and then those business expenses. So all of that comes out and then whatever's left over is what you, what you take home. Mm -hmm. You can't just do the math on like, Oh, if I charge, these people a hundred dollars and I get a, a thousand people to buy this thing that cost a hundred dollars. Like I have X dot, like mm, it doesn't work like that. Like you said, there's, there's the product that you had to buy. There's the time you invested into it. There's the people you had to pay the, you know, the tent you had to rent, what, whatever the case may be, you will have some business expenses. And yes, you have maybe slightly less business expenses when you are an online business, but we are not expense free. Um, Chloe, do, do you have business expenses? Oh Yeah. I got business expenses. <laughs> Woo, Lord have mercy. Softwares uh, as a financial planner, um, all the different pieces of technology that you're using to be an online business, uh, to make things kind of work together. One piece has to work with the other piece and talk to that. Um, all these pieces of efficiency, those are business expenses and they all cost because those companies want to make money as well. Exactly. And, and we've talked about this uh, last week, you know, just people starting businesses like to, to save on taxes, but yeah, when it, when when you're really in it, like we are, we're not trying to spend extra money that we don't have to spend in our business. So you really like, have well, to. Let me, let me grab lunch. It's a business expense. <laughs> you're like, well, that's money out of my bank account. Like, and <laughs> also, yeah, it, the meals it, are only fifty percent deductible. <laughs> right, right. But it, it pays to be lean sometimes, especially in those in those early years. Um, so I, I did want to talk a little bit too about startup costs and then the initial like ongoing costs. So. You really have to think about, in addition to how much it's going to cost to run your business every year, you know, how much will it cost for the startup? So, you know, you might have to get the website put together or, you know, if you are doing a brick and mortar or if you're, if you're buying a franchise, which I've had clients interested in that, I mean, that can get in tens of thousands of dollars just for that piece. Um, you know, there, there's just so many things. And if you, and some of it depends on if you have a product or a service. You know, if you're selling a product, how much does it cost to actually make that product and produce it? Uh, you know, what's what's the the margin there? Uh, you know, if you're providing a service, what what do you need? What tools and things do you need to to provide that service efficiently? How much time are you spending? And so, what you know, what are those startup costs? Are you are you going to outsource things? Are you going to do things yourself? Uh, so that that all needs to be factored into the amount that you have to have saved in order to even get the business going. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so the piece I want to touch on is the, the outsourcing versus doing it yourself. So, you know, there's this term like kind of bootstrapping, boot, bootstrapping and figuring it out. Your investment of time can save you a lot of money, but there's also this balance where sometimes you're investing your time in something you're never going to be um, heavy in that skill set on. And it might be easier and a, be a better use of your time if you outsource that thing. So you should definitely want to come up with a series of questions to ask yourself, what is my time worth? Uh, and whether or not I should be investing my time to save money, because time is money. Absolutely, time is money. Um, but also, like you said, if you have limited funds and you might and you have what feels like more time in the, in the short term, you might want to invest the time in learning that thing. And it's also nice. I always call it like cleaning the toilets as an entrepreneur to know how things work, even if it's not something you want to do for the long term. Uh, so I, you know, like I said, if it, to go to the cleaning toilets, you know, you're in a restaurant, you probably don't want to clean the toilets of your restaurant on a regular basis, but it's your restaurant. You better know how to clean a toilet in a way that your customers are going to be okay with. And with what the, the boxes are that need to be checked for the health department, not to come in there and shut your restaurant down sort of situation. Um, so sometimes it's like, it's a skill set that you might need, uh, on the off chance, someone else is not around to be able to help you. But also, it's not something that is the, the best use of your time on a day to day basis. Hiring somebody to clean bathrooms from the very beginning could be could work out fine. But maybe cleaning the bathrooms for the first two or three months on your own uh, makes it a lot easier and makes your money stretch a little bit further. 
Yeah. And you also have to balance, you know, there, there are things you have to do to get clients in the door and, and to get, to get revenue coming in. So if you're spending all this time, you know, building your own website or, or, or doing things that maybe you have to learn the skills to do versus paying someone, that's time that you're taking away from being able to get, get money coming in the door. Ooh, ooh, but Chloe, can I just say that there are some social media marketers out here that are not worth two pennies. And like, <laughs> this is this is one area where I found that, you know, a lot of people are getting into it. Everybody wants to say like, oh, I can do your social media for you. But some people just don't have a clue. So you you do want to be very discerning in this in this area. I mean, like you said, and I don't even think it's so much as a scam. I think some people think that they're doing a good job, but mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Um, yeah, everybody is not good for you. Yeah. And then, you know, also think about you have to run, you know, to getting into the numbers again, you have to run some projections, like how long will it take you to break even? And you know, once you figure out what those costs are going to be, uh, your startup costs and the ongoing costs, how much revenue do you need to make just to cover those costs that you came out of pocket spending? You know, then how much do you need to make to become profitable? And then eventually to pay yourself enough to live on. So, you know, you kind of have to run those projections. And then think about, you know, what it takes to actually hit those revenue numbers, you know, from a sales perspective or marketing perspective. Uh, so it's, it's really, you know, it can get a little complicated and it's not as easy as everyone on the internet makes it out to be. <laughs> but what advice do you have for somebody that's like a true creative? Because I can think of like three really good friends of mine that, you know, money falls in their lap. They, they are really good at their, their work and creating things you know, products, services, et cetera. But like they hear the word projection and they would just go climb into bed and put the pillow over their head. Um, you know, and, they, and they're managing to make it, but they, could they could they be more organized as business owners? Absolutely. Uh, what what exists for somebody who is truly not a numbers person? Like you said, we're, we're talking about kind of outsourcing here. Like if, you, if you're creative and, and Chloe say like, oh my goodness, do a projection. What am I projecting? I don't even know what to project. I just want to help people fill in the blank. Um, you know, what should somebody be thinking about as they hire somebody in that area to make sure their numbers are right? Yeah. And I would say, I mean, there, there are people who are the, the lucky few that are money magnets and, you know, we, we both know plenty of them, <laughs> but you know, it's like, they, they don't have to, they, they, they don't have to do as much work as we do to make a lot of money. And, and so that, that's not the problem, you know, and, and building the business and everything is, it's the easy part for them. But in that case, you have the money coming in, but you need to make sure that you can hire people to help you manage those finances. So get get a good bookkeeper, get a good accountant, uh, get a good financial advisor, because those people can help you determine, okay, are you spending too much on business expenses? Or how can we, you know, how can we make sure that you have, have all of your benefits set up and that you're, you know, you're, you're running this business efficiently and making sure that you know, you're, you're using this business, this income that you're, that you're able to easily generate for your benefit. Amen. Hallelujah to that. Hire a team, put them in place so that you can continue to be the creative money magnet that you are. This does not have to stop you, but you do need to do some responsible adulting things to keep you going. Absolutely. So the other thing is, yeah, we talked a little bit before about if you have a partner or spouse with dependable income and benefits um, who can support you, but you know, let's say you don't have that. You know, just thinking about getting into business, it's not an all or nothing, you know, situation. You don't have to just quit your job and start a business, you know, right away. You can start as a side hustle and, and kind of work your way up to full time. So, you know, even with that, you know, I'm going to go back to the the bad word of projections, but, <laughs> you know, you really want to know how much, you know, if, if you start this as a side hustle, how much do you need to make? to take yourself up to the next level, or maybe, you know, kind of slowly back down with your full-time job and go to part-time or, you know, what, what do you need to make to get to the point where you can quit your job completely and, and still be comfortable? Amen. Hallelujah to that. All right. So we've given you a lot of information. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you're one of those people in 2023, you're like, Ooh, I, I didn't leave in December. I came back in January. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Y'all, I'm trying to get out of this door as soon as I can. We've given you some tips and tricks to be able to help it. Chloe, any other kind of general tips that you want to provide so that people can get themselves going in the right direction? 
Yeah. The, you know, the first one is, you know, like we said, get your financial house in order, know your numbers. Um, and if you don't know your numbers, get some help from someone who can, who can really work with you to figure those things out. Um, also don't be so quick to take out loans or get funding. If you're not sure how you'll pay it back. A lot of people, you know, just go straight to the, Oh, I'm going to start a business. I don't need to have money saved. I'm just going to take out loans to get it started. And then the business fails. So, you know, what do you do at that point? You have to make sure that, you know, you can pay those loans back or, or pay investors back if they're, if they're investing in your business. Um, and then finally, you know, just really think about why you're starting a business. You know, Lauren mentioned, you know, think about things that, you know, that match your skill sets and your passions. But, you know, we hear all these buzzwords all the time about, you know, passive income and building generational wealth and, you know, and then just, you know, reasons why people start these businesses. But if you're not starting it for the right reasons and you're just thinking about making money, it's probably not going to work out. Right. There is not very many ways, very, very few ways in this world to get rich quick. <laughs> and when you can get rich quick, you usually are taking on a gargantuan amount of risk in order to be able to do so. So let's just continue to get rich slowly by doing the right things at the right time, building strong foundations and being really happy as we watch the years go by and those things pay off on our behalf. Let's wrap it up with a money quote. What do you got for us today, Chloe? Yes. Yeah, so today's money quote is ideas are easy. Implementation is hard. And that's Guy Kawasaki. This is a word because people are rich in ideas, but woo, when you got to roll up your sleeves and get it done, done, done. Um, I'm in the, I'm in the midst of, uh, I don't even know, probably the 1000th iteration. So yes, I've got tons of ideas and yes, they in fact come to me pretty easily, but I am still implementing, you know, different things. And it's like, oh, maybe I could have implemented this on the front end and it would have been a little bit different. I think I'm a good implement implementer. Is that a thing? Uh, but implementation is hard. And sometimes you're going to try to implement something and it's not going to work. And so that brings you back to the drawing board with your ideas. Um, and that, that hamster wheel can get a little bit overwhelming as well. Like I keep coming up with these things. I keep trying, but they don't work. And, you know, at some point you're just like, screw it. I'm going to go back to my nine to five. Um, this is not for the faint of heart, but if you want it, you can have it. So don't give up. Uh, Chloe, do you have any closing words for us? Yeah, so that that actually just made me think, and that this isn't financial advice as much as it is just general business advice. But you know, think about the type of person that you are. Are you one of those you know idea people that you have a hard time implementing? You know, if that's the case, maybe you need some help starting a business. You need a partner that's going to actually help with some of the implementation. Um, but yeah, you know, think about your skill sets and and how that lends itself to being a business owner. And if it's something that you could really realistically do on your own. Ooh, that is a good one that we didn't think about because sometimes we think entrepreneurship and it's like solo entrepreneurship. So Chloe and I run independent businesses, but entrepreneurship can also be you and two or three of your friends getting together or maybe not your friends, maybe two or three people that have opposing skill sets, because like you said, the three of you together make a powerhouse team. So don't be afraid to do something that you're really passionate about with somebody else, because generally when you put more heads together, it allows you to have greater impact. It allows greater diversity in what can be accomplished. Um, and it will be really awesome. Yeah. All right. We are wrapping for this episode. Check out the resources uh, in the show notes. We definitely have that old podcast. We'll throw some other links and things there that will be helpful for you. And we'll look forward to seeing you in just two weeks. Happy Valentine's Day. Wishing you all lots of love today. Bye.